Order. The next item in the order paper is a motion on Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to one hour and 30 minutes for this debate. The proposal of the motion will have 10 minutes to propose and 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. Clark, please read the motion. That the motion relating to Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, as detailed on the order paper, be agreed. I call Mr Thomas Buchanan to move the motion. Mr Buchanan. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to move the motion in light of Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month this November and to bring this very important topic to the floor of the House this evening. Today, 24 people will die from pancreatic cancer in the UK. That is 24 people out of 8,700 people who will lose their battle against pancreatic cancer this year. Pancreatic cancer is a deadly scourge which is sweeping across the UK at an increasing alarming rate and it is time that we as a government at government level put measures in place to stop this floodgate of pain, trauma and death which has been unleashed across the province. One of my constituents, Mrs Kerry Irvine, who is just coming into the gallery at the moment, is the reason that I brought this matter to the House. Since losing her husband, Noel, to pancreatic cancer in 2011, Kerry has been fighting to raise awareness into this awful disease. And I will let you hear what Kerry herself said about the day her life changed forever. April the 22nd was the day my life changed. I changed never to be the same person again after I heard the words, Noel, you have cancer. It's pancreatic cancer which has spread to your liver. Kerry continued, we quickly learned that we were living on borrowed time, six months to a lifetime. How could you do that? And how can anyone put six months into a lifetime? These haunting words are heart-rendering, and today in Northern Ireland, too many people are also thinking the same thing and asking the same questions. They have so little time left with their loved ones after receiving this diagnosis. Pancreatic cancer is not a rare disease. The latest available figures show that in 2012, 244 new cases of pancreatic cancer were diagnosed, and out of those, 243 deaths were recorded. This equates to 6% of all the deaths from cancer in Northern Ireland. In fact, the most worrying statistic about can pancreatic cancer is that, unlike most other cancers, it is going against the trends and mortality rates are increasing. Recent research from Cancer Research UK has shown that, thankfully, mortality rates for most cancers are declining, yet pancreatic cancer is not following these statistics. It is, shown, uh, it is shocking to note that the five-year survival rates for pancreatic cancer has remained largely unchanged for the past 40 years. Northern Ireland is at the bottom of the pile, faring only slightly better than Bulgaria in the one-year survival rates for pancreatic cancer patients and is trailing far behind the rest of the UK, which is already failing behind, falling behind the European average. These depressing figures accumulate on the fact that pancreatic cancer has the worst survival outcome of any of the 21 most common cancers. At present, the forecast for pancreatic cancer is bleak. By 2030, it is said to be the fourth largest cancer killer. Despite the enormity and seriousness of these figures, pancreatic cancer receives only 1% of National Cancer Research Institute partner spend. If we compare spend on breast cancer of 3,000 426 per death per year, pancreatic ca cancer staggers into um, ob oblivion as at a measly £625 per death per year. The disparity in funding allocation to different cancers must be addressed. There is a direct link between funding allocation, research and tackling disease, and we cannot have success in fighting pancreatic cancer if research funding levels do not improve. The lack of funding over the past 40 years has led to pancreatic cancer being the neglected disease. And it is, no, it is little wonder that pancreatic cancer has been labelled the Cinderella of all cancers in, re in relation to other cancers such as breast cancers and prostate cancer. And I am here today to lobby for and stand up for pancreatic cancer and to call for uh, equal allocation of funding for this disease. In Northern Ireland, aggressive measures need to be put in place now 
to develop early detection and treatment tools before incidences of this disease are allowed to dramatically increase. The way pancreatic cancer is detected and treated now is not working. Firstly, 95% of patients who are diagnosed with the, with the disease die from it. It is so deadly because during the early stages when the tumour would be traceable, there are, are uh, usually no specific symptoms. It tends to be discovered at advanced stages when abdominal pain or jaundice may result. Presently, there are no screening tools. The average survival for a pancreatic cancer patient is just two to six months from diagnosis, largely because by the time the disease is diagnosed, it is too late for surgery. Around 80% of patients are diagnosed when the disease has advanced. Related to this and another uh, incredibly worrying statistic regarding pancreatic cancer, it has been shown that 40% of patients visit their GP three or more times before being referred to hospital, and over 16% of patients have had to visit the GP or hospital seven times or more before getting a correct diagnosis. This is despite research carried out by Pancreatic Cancer UK, which has shown that nearly 25% of pancreatic cancer patients experience symptoms of up to 12 months prior to being diagnosed. Clearly, there is a problem here, and this problem is costing lives. Pancreatic cancer charities have repeatedly, repeatedly told of this pattern of missed opportunities of, of being diagnosed at GP surgeries or hospitals. Sadly, the speed of diagnosis has a direct impact on the eligibility for surgery or palliative treatments. And if these are, are constantly, consistently too late, then lives are going to be lost needlessly. It would appear that GPs have a problem when it comes to diagnosing pancreatic cancer. Upon investigation of GP guidelines, it is clear that they are structured around cancer type rather than preventing the, sim the, uh, the symptoms. The GP must think cancer first, then think sight, and then compare patient symptoms. Mr. Deputy Speaker, surely this is illogical. Why are guidelines not written around preventing symptoms which would rule out a cancer diagnosis first. It would seem that it is difficult to get clinicians to think of cancer first uh, when making a diagnosis. This goes some way to explain why GP practitioners in the UK only diagnose a measly 18 per cent of pancreatic cancer cases. This year, I met a remarkable and inspirational lady, Ali Stunt, who is a survivor of pancreatic cancer. Ali survived the disease and now heads up the charity which is tackling pancreatic cancer head on. And rather than simply bemoaning problems surrounding the, uh, the cancer, the, the charity have, as their name suggests, taken action and have developed an online training module accredited by the Royal College of General Practitioners which is provided free for GPs and can be used for continual professional development. Pancreatic Cancer Action is the first charity in the world to provide a practical solution to the problem of late diagnosis within pancreatic cancer patients. And I would like to congratulate Ali Stunt and the Pancreatic Cancer Action on the very successful cancer awareness advertising campaign. These very controversial campaigns have just uh, last week won two highly acclaimed awards from the Institute of Advertising Practitioners. I met Ali back in June when she came over here and we had a meeting with the then Health Minister Edwin Poots and outlined the, the fully accredited online tool that the PCA have made for GP training. Since this meeting, I am pleased to inform the House that the training module Diagnosing Pancreatic Cancer in Primary Care has been fully published in the Royal College of GPs Members Newsletter and it is readily available for the GPs to access. I now call on all GPs in Northern Ireland to make, aware, to make themselves aware of this invaluable tool which is free, freely available to them. I urge the Queen's University in Belfast, which is the principal medical school in Northern Ireland, to recommend that all their students take this practical module to raise their own awareness into this matter. And I also call on my colleague, the Health Minister, to oversee the promotion of this free tool right across Northern Ireland. And in addition, I urge the Minister to talk to the Royal College of GPs in Northern Ireland to look for additional ways to promote this tool. Delving deeper 
uh, into the system of how pancreatic cancer patients are treated in Northern Ireland leaves a lot to be desired. At present, there is only one HPB nurse for the whole of Northern Ireland. This lady is the only specialist pancreatic uh, a cancer nurse for the whole population of our province. And, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I think that something more needs to be done in this matter. If we had more specialists in the to community, they would have access to help and uh, clarity on these issues. I have a lot more here, as you all appreciate, but I do thank the uh, House for allowing this to come to the floor t today, and I trust that something will be done to move it forward. I call Ms. Maeve McLaughlin, Chairperson of the Health Committee. Uh, August, uh, last count caller, and I, I want to thank the proposer of the motion uh, and bringing forward what is a, a, an important uh, topic to the House today. Uh, and I do welcome the opportunity to participate uh, in, this, in this debate. I, I think it is, Mr. Deputy Speaker, appropriate that we do all that was, is within our gift in relation to raising public awareness, I think, in the first instance of pancreatic cancer. And I think it's important to point out that this is not a rare cancer. Uh, and, and, and the proposer of the motion has reflected on a number of the statistics there. But you know, the latest available figures that I have certainly looked at show that there were 244 new cases and there was 243 deaths recorded in the North in, in 2012. Uh, so none of those statistics can suggest that this is a rare uh, cancer. Uh, the proposer has pointed out about it's responsible for almost 6% of cancer deaths in the north. Uh, and again, research by organisations such as Cancer Research suggests, as, as the proposer has said, that it is set to become the fourth biggest cancer killer by 2030. So, we have survival rates and a lot of ongoing good positive work for most forms of cancer and thankfully those survival rates have been rising but the five-year survival rates for pancreatic cancer has simply remained unchanged uh, and I think Mr Deputy Speaker this is something that we need to be mindful of when we are looking at uh, the, the need for public awareness uh, and much more around this. It, it, in effect, leaves pancreatic cancer as the worst survival outcome for any of the, most, the top 21 most common cancers. That's not something that we should be proud of, and it's certainly something that we should be targeting in, in terms of, of the support, public awareness and resources that's required. And the proposer has alluded to this. The, the early stages of pancreatic cancer often causes no symptoms, so it, it makes that diagnosis quite difficult. Um, and treatment really depends on the type, location and the stage of, of the cancer. And, and quite often surgery is, is, is the only way pancreatic cancer can be completely cured. But however, the condition is usually as advanced by the time that it is diagnosed that surgery, some of the cancer charities will indicate, is only suitable for around 15 to 20 percent of people. So the, 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 the cancer has advanced so much that surgery isn't, isn't an option. I will indeed, yes. agree with me that one of the ways to, to, to seek to uh, defeat this uh, whole spread of pancreatic cancer that's been caught too late is that GPs and clinicians would think cancer first and go down the road of, of treating for cancer first or, or looking for cancer first and then treat all the other symptoms after that. The next minute. I thank the member for his intervention and I agree and I want to come to that because I think we do need to be mindful of not only the facts but what do we do around it. Uh, so I, I want to go back to the point where, and I think again the proposer alluded to this, that 48 per cent of pancreatic cancer diagnoses, and this was figures that came out from cancer research, were actually made through emergency admissions. Again, you know, a diagnosis has been picked up through emergency admissions. And even, and this has been alluded to, even when a diagnosis is made, the, the patient experience is often extremely poor. And again, that's something that we need to be mindful of. The issue of the specialist pancreatic cancer nurse, there's only one specialist nurse in the north. Again, not a statistic that we should be proud of and should be actively striving to do something with. 
There should be better public awareness as well as better, a better awareness among health professionals, including GPs and clinicians. And I am aware that the Public Health Agency are currently discussing a generic cancer awareness campaign, and I welcome that. But I would call on the Minister or ask the Minister if he will consider running a specific pancreatic cancer awareness campaign. I would ask the Minister today what actions he will take to boost public awareness of pancreatic cancer and its symptoms. And I think it is important, Mr Deputy Speaker, to reflect on the evidence that was given to the all-party group on pancreatic cancer. One respondent and given evidence said, I went to my GP more times in the 12 months prior, prior to my diagnosis than I had in the previous 12 years. That statistic as well, I think, needs to be taken into consideration. So what needs to be done, Mr Deputy Speaker? We need to develop screening tests. We need to invest a greater proportion into research funding. We need to look at better GP training and comprehensive referral guidelines. We need to look at referral pathways, including direct access to patient CT scans for GPs. And we need to look at innovative referral pathways and how they can be developed and rolled out in the North. I welcome, Mr Deputy Speaker, the fact that Pancreatic Cancer Charity has identified two pilot projects, and they have identified the North as one of the locations for a pancreatic uh, specialist nurse and indeed a community involvement coordinator. I met the charity in June and I wish to commend the work that they do in this area and their continuing lobby with both the Health Minister and the Public Health Agency. Call Mr Fergal McKinney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I welcome this opportunity <coughs> pardon me, as SDLP Health Spokesperson and Health Committee member to speak on such an important issue that has affected and continues to affect many people here. And I'd like to thank the proposers uh, of the motion. As, as noted by previous speakers, pancreatic cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer death in the UK and has the worst survival rate of all cancers, yet it receives merely a 1% of research spend, uh, coming in at around 5.2 million, which is significantly lower than that spent on other types of cancers. And the five-year survival rate for pancreatic cancer is 3%, and that has not changed in the last 40 years, despite significant advances in the treatment and survival rate of other types of cancers, such as breast and, and prostate. And there are obviously serious problems, and problems which I think this Assembly and Government can go uh, some way in addressing. So what can we do? Well, Mr Buchanan has said it. There needs to be greater levels of research funding, along with a campaign for more public awareness of symptoms, as has been alluded to, and GPs needed to be provided with greater support in diagnosis, for example, through access to CT scanners, and GPs must have a proper care pathway, as Ms McLaughlin has said, in place to fast-track hospital admissions for diagnosis and specialist treatment. All of this could be conducive to increasing overall survival rates. But what is almost as deeply worrying is the international, national and regional differentiation in relation to survival rates. According to a Eurocare study in 2009, the UK survival rate after one year is 16%, which is well behind the European average of 20.9, with countries like Belgium having almost double the survival rate of the UK. And what's most startling is that here in Northern Ireland, it is the lowest of all survival rates after one to five years, uh, down at 3%. And as I say, that hasn't changed. These are obvious failings which are having a further detrimental effect on uh, pancreatic cancer sufferers. The figures speak for themselves. We must acknowledge, however, the systemic issues at stake and acknowledge that some of it is our fault in that sense. It's without doubt that early diagnosis is in par paramount in increasing survival rates of patients suffering from pancreatic cancer. And just to underscore again Mr Buchanan and Ms McLaughlin's uh, points, 48% of pancreatic cancer diagnoses are made by emergency admission when the cancer is at that advanced stage and when it's too late for curable treatment. And in this case, only 9% uh, uh, survive after one year. So it's evident from what we've heard there exist numerous difficulties 
in diagnosing pancreatic cancer at primary care level. And the fact that 40% of patients visit a GP three or more times before a diagnosis also speaks for itself. And can I just refer to that point that you were making earlier on? Somebody who doesn't go to the doctor uh, for 12 years and then does, some, there must be an alarm bell or a red flag there that would welcome them through quickly and not delay their, their subsequent appointment. Uh, there must be mechanisms put in place to ensure greater dialogue between primary and secondary care providers. And if I can echo the call for an efficient and effective care pathway to accommodate this. Over the last number of years, there's been significant attention focused on personalised medicine as a method uh, for delivering treatment for cancer patients. There have been advances by organisations such as Cancer Research UK, which has conducted a considerable amount of research into tumours, noting in particular how individuals react differently to treatment. And it means that patients can receive personalised medicine, and of course scientists are continuing to work on developing new drugs and treatments. So there obviously needs to be an integrated approach to the delivery of treatment for cancer patients through personalised medicine. And if I could make an appeal, we must fully embrace the new innovative cancer drugs that are available. The SDLP has spent most of this year highlighting the need for greater access uh, to these specialised cancer drugs. And indeed, many... I should point out to the member that all of the drugs uh, that are available for pancreatic uh, cancer in Northern Ireland are available without going through the IFR mechanism. Uh, there's no impediment to their access in the province. And I thank the helpful intervention from the Minister, and maybe you could just clear up by nod if it's possible. Does that include a Braxin? Yes, thank you very much. I was just about to refer to that. And that's helpful that that drug is available to pancreatic cancer sufferers. Though it doesn't take away from the wider point that I'm making that, indeed, for all cancers, if we had greater access to these cancer drugs, I think it would make a difference. And I'd like to underscore this point further in relation to that. If we embrace the cancer drugs model under the system, the PPRS system that is available, uh, we could be getting them effectively for free. But it would also underscore our further and well-established research drug development at Queen's. And if we were to fully embrace the concept of cancer centre of excellence here, uh, I fully believe, having experienced uh, through travelling to San Diego during the summer, that there are real economic benefits to be had uh, from embracing the overall, overall model. And in San Diego some years ago, uh, they um, uh, recognised the need for development for their own area and created a £5 billion a year uh, economy around that. And that would help not only uh, pancreatic cancer sufferers, uh, but the wider cancer population. Um, I'm conscious that I'm out of my time, and can I just conclude by saying that we must move, because after all, another 40 years cannot pass where survival rates remain at 3 per cent. Thank you, Mr Deputy Call Mr. Mr Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I also welcome the opportunity to speak in this motion this evening. It's a sad fact that pancreatic cancer, unfortunately, does not have the same profile as many of the other cancers. And there's a general unfamiliarity with the disease. Unfortunately, this runs from the patient right up to our medical services. Sadly, as the motion says, too often people are not diagnosed until it is too late. As has already been said, pancreatic cancer is one of the leading causes of death by cancer in Northern Ireland. And in fact, according to Pancreatic Cancer UK, it's the fifth biggest cancer killer. Unfortunately, as we know, the UK's survival rate are some, are some of the worst in Europe. Whilst there has been some improvements in recent years, on the whole, the overall survival rate has barely budged over the last few decades when compared to other cancers. This is further compounded when you consider that overall people are now living nearly six times longer after cancer diagnosis than was the case, uh, as Mr McKinney has mentioned, 40 years ago. While mortality for most common cancers is declining, as has been pointed out this evening, pancreatic cancer is set to become the fourth biggest cancer killer by 2030. Mr Deputy Speaker, I think we need to ask the question, why? With advances in medical research and medication, this shouldn't be the case. One issue, no doubt, is public awareness 
and in the case of pancreatic cancer, the lack of it. Early detection is key, but unfortunately, its symptoms are those of a number of much less critical illnesses. That is why, tragically, so many people are misdiagnosed and miss out on help when they first go and seek it. This also contributes to its frighteningly short survival period of just two to six months from diagnosis. With a 1 in 90 chance of getting the cancer and a 95 per cent chance of dying once diagnosed, you can see why it does not attract the same commercial funding for research than the more treatable forms of cancer. This is proven by the fact that pancreatic cancer is responsible for 5.2 per cent of UK cancer deaths, but gets only 1 per cent of the National Cancer Research Institute partners' research spend. However, just because it might not be financially attractive to the drugs companies should not have to mean that research should be neglected. Queen's University, for instance, is becoming an increasingly significant global leader in tackling cancers, and I would like to pay tribute to the vital work that they do there. I would ask the Minister here today whether, through the support his department offers to bodies, including the National Cancer Research Institute, pancreatic and other neglected cancers could be prioritised more. One per cent of funding simply is not enough. Research into innovative pancreatic cancer screening tests, especially because of its difficulty to diagnose, should be considered an absolute necessity. The lack of awareness of the cancer is also having a massive strain on our health service. Many people, as we know, only learn that they have the disease after being admitted to as an emergency to their local hospital. And as the Minister no doubt will be well aware, often the costs associated with these are huge. By improving awareness, both within the public and medical staff, people could be diagnosed earlier and start receiving that vital treatment quicker. Conversations need to be held with the general practice and practices in terms of additional training that could be beneficial, and we need to create a new screening practice. None of this should be impossible to achieve. The purpose of this motion is rightly to raise the profile of pancreatic cancer. However, I would make it clear that getting this motion onto the order papers and debated in this chamber will do nothing unless it is followed up by tangible action. The measure of the Minister will be the action he takes after this debate is over. So, For the sake of pancreatic cancer sufferers and their families, both now Member and in the future, I truly hope the Minister will act on this House. Thank you. I call Mrs Judith Cochran. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I too welcome the opportunity to contribute to this debate today, which comes before the House just at the start of Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Like many similar campaigns for other types of cancer, this provides an opportunity um, to celebrate with those who have survived, remember those who have been lost to the disease, as well as raising awareness of the illness. It is also an opportunity for the Assembly to assess our current approach to tackling this disease and whether more can be done to prevent or treat it. My colleague Naomi Long, MP, who has often spoken of her concerns about this devastating illness, recently asked the Secretary of State for Health to provide estimates of the variation in survival rates for pancreatic cancer between UK regions, and the response was very telling. England currently has a five-year survival rate of 4.7%, Wales 5.4%, and Northern Ireland a five-year survival rate of just 3%, which lags far behind the European average of 6.9%. So it's clear that there's work to be done. The motion states that pancreatic cancer accounts for 6% of cancer of all cancer deaths in Northern Ireland, and we should note that it is predicted that by 2030 it will overtake breast cancer as the fourth most common cancer killer. We must therefore understand the reasons behind this in order to try to improve survival rates. Others have already spoken about the fact that only 10% of pancreatic cancer patients undergo curative surgery, or perhaps this would be more accurately referred to as surgery with curative intent. The main reason for this would seem to be that for many, at the time of diagnosis, the cancer is too far advanced for such surgery to have an impact. 
and therefore it is the issue of early diagnosis that requires our pressing attention. I note that the motion acknowledges that 40% of patients visit their GP three times or more before specialist referral, and there's solid data to support this. But we need to be careful not to simply blame our GPs for being selective about referring patients who present with common and usually benign symptoms. Furthermore, as there is no specific biological marker to indicate the malignant disease, it can be extremely difficult to detect and diagnose pancreatic cancer, especially in its early stages. I know in my own constituency of East Belfast, patients report high satisfaction with their GPs despite struggling to access appointments in a context of increasing demand. And I believe we need to support our GPs in their decision making and recognise their value as gatekeepers to an overburdened secondary health care system. That said, I do believe that there is an onus on the Minister and his department to encourage GPs to make use of freely available and validated diagnostic aids, for example the Macmillan Cancer Decision Support Tool, as well as open learning opportunities that have already been referenced, like the Royal College of General Practitioners Pancreatic Cancer e-learning module. And we should also be ensuring that GPs have access to CT scans, etc., as has already been mentioned by others in the debate. Mr Deputy Speaker, whilst today's motion focuses on boosting early diagnosis rates to improve survival rates, I believe we should also acknowledge that even with these improvements, there will still be many who will not reach that five-year survival mark. Therefore, we should also call on the Minister to examine the current practices to ensure that there is optimal support and symptom palliation for those whose illness is terminal. In conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, if we are to reduce deaths due to pancreatic cancer, then we must, not, we must not only work to improve diagnosis, but also continue to combat the three greatest risk factors, smoking, obesity and excessive alcohol intake. For prevention, as we all know, is better than cure. Thank you. I call Gordon Dunn. Mr Deputy Speaker, and I too welcome this opportunity to speak on this debate on what is a very serious issue and something which continues to have an impact on many families across Northern Ireland. Pancreatic cancer is yet another terrible form of cancer which can often have tragic consequences and one which must be taken very seriously. Sadly, this cancer is now responsible for around 6% of all cancer deaths across Northern Ireland, which equates to around 200 deaths per year and is now the fifth leading cause of UK cancer deaths. One of the most worrying statistics is that five that the five-year survival rate of 3% has not improved in over 40 years, while survival rates for other cancers have thankfully increased. This, there is a real issue with pancreatic cancer in that it is difficult to diagnose, and its symptoms often mirror other less critical non-threatening conditions. This is why pancreatic cancer has become known as a silent killer. The fact that this form of cancer affects both men and women equally is further confirmation that improvements need to be made in the fight against this terrible condition. I would fully support the sentiments within this motion, asking the Minister to continue to work towards improving the diagnosis of this condition. Early diagnosis is vital and we need to reduce the misdiagnosis across the health sector. The role of our GPs is vital in ensuring early diagnosis. Patients must be encouraged to report any symptoms at the earliest possible stage, and it is important that GPs are fully competent in identifying such symptoms. We need to do all we can to improve pancreatic cancer survival rates across Northern Ireland. The statistic that the average survival rate for a pancreatic cancer patient is just two to six months from diagnosis is shocking. This is largely due to the time which the, the, time which the disease is diagnosed is often too late for curative surgical treatment. Sadly, around 80 per cent of patients are diagnosed at a point where the disease has seriously advanced. I would like to pay tribute and commend the charities and the organisations who work with cancer sufferers and their families on a daily basis in providing support at such a difficult time for everyone 
suffering from this terrible condition. It would be worth commending the work of the Pancreatic Cancer Research Fund and the Pancreatic Cancer UK in the important work they do in supporting families and patients. Education is important in improving and, and better targeting within our communities through public awareness campaigns and outreach programmes to raise awareness of this condition, its symptoms and measures to decrease the, the risk of pancreatic cancer developing. I recently spoke, Mr Minister, with a patient who is suffering from this terrible condition and is currently undergoing treatment for pancreatic cancer. And I would urge the Minister to continue to support the funding of drugs for cancer sufferers. This patient is actually on life-prolonging drugs which are available through the system and we, we certainly appreciate that and I think we would further urge the Minister to continue with the campaign for uh, drugs in the battle against cancer. I think it is vital that the Minister focuses on this in, in in these difficult times, but it's important that, that that focus remains. Health promotion and public awareness campaigns encouraging healthier, level, healthier living all have a key role to play in helping to tackle cancer. Encouraging a healthier lifestyle, better diets, more exercise, reducing both smoking and alcohol consumption are all measures which should be worked on and fully encouraged. I support this motion, Mr Deputy Speaker. I call Oliver McMullen. I call you. Members, I rise today in, in support of the motion and also thank the member for bringing it forward for debate. Pancreatic cancer in, in the north of Ireland each year accounts for around 200 deaths, which is 5.5% of all cancer-related deaths. It's extremely difficult for cancer to diagnose and treat. Symptoms are vague and generally appear at advanced stages of the disease. One of the main concerns with the disease is that there is no early diagnostic test available. 3% of those diagnosed with pancreatic cancer survive five years or more. And sadly, as, it, as all members have alluded to, this hasn't changed in 40 years. While this cancer is the fifth leading cause of death, it has the worst survival rate of all cancers. Yet survival rates for other, uh, other cancers have remained uh, steady. Cancers such as bowel cancer is currently 54%, 1971 was 22 breast cancer 84%, 1971 was 56 and prostate cancer currently 88%, 1971 was 31%. So members, this is just one of some of the survival figures. What causes pancreatic cancer is not yet fully understood, but certain facts have been identified in the development of the disease which for, for the stated age, especially between the ages of 50 and 80. Smoking is another big one, uh, and diabetes and stomach ulcers. Although it is the fifth leading cause of cancer, death is the worst survival rate of all cancers. It still only received 1% of, of, of research spend. Dr. Andrew Miller of the London, uh, London Cancer Statistics in September this year stated, this has to be, there has to be a direct link between the lack of funding that is allocated to pancreatic cancer and the lack of progress in treating the disease. The fact that people have a 1 in 90, per chance, 1 in 90 chance of getting this cancer, but a 95% of dying once it's diagnosed, these figures would make it less likely to attract commercial funding than in the more treatable forms of cancer. Of these figures, the government needs to step up to the plate and give more money to research. The National, Ca uh, National Cancer Research Institute 2013 budget, uh, 2013 budget only 5.2 million, or just 1% of its budget, was spent on pancreatic cancer. Breast cancer got 41 million, bowel cancer got 24.5, leukemia got 32, and prostate got 21. The money that is spent here equates to £625 per death per year, compared with uh, 3426 per death per year in breast cancer. This is a time when deaths from other cancers are declining. Pancreatic cancer in the past 10 years is increasing. I would like to say, uh, just as someone who has cancer, I do understand how, how people feel. When you're sat down in that, cha in that room with the, with the specialist and he comes out with that word, cancer, 
you go into a different world, you're, you're in a different place. The one thing is missing today, and I don't think it's any fault of any members, is the effect that this has on families. And I had asked the minister to bear that in mind, as well as everything else that I totally agree with everything else that all members have said here today and are going to say. Please don't forget the families, because the families are left to pick up the pieces. They're devastated when their loved one is, 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 is diagnosed with cancer, when they're getting treated for cancer. They're, they're grief-stricken when, they're, when they're, 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 their member dies. There is not, not enough help there for families. They're left on their own. They're left on, on their own what to do. The man of the house, he could be self-employed. What's he supposed to do? He's left with no income coming into the house. All of these everyday questions have to be answered by themselves. There is movement on that there through Macmillan, through different uh, citizens and advice. But there needs to be more help coming from the department minister on the help for families. And, and, and saying that there, I think we, we need to be treating cancer in, in, in a more humane way. If we are still looking at five-year survival rates, if we haven't moved on f and, and, and getting those survival rates up in 40 years, there's something wrong. We are still supplying the drugs, as the minister says. The drugs are available, that's good, but there has to be something else. I do believe that 1% of the national budget to be spent on research and pancreatic cancer is absolutely, is really a disgrace. And that's not to say the rest is going to other cancers. Not. The more money goes, the better. But in reality, just over 5 million to go on research per year, I don't think in this day and age, and I think all the members would agree, is enough. So, Minister, I'd ask you to I'm, I'm, do everything you can out of this debate today, but please don't forget the families. I call Pam Cameron. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I rise to support today's motion on pancreatic cancer. I spoke on many occasions in this chamber on the need for public awareness, support for our clinicians, and improving patient outcomes in relation to the fight against cancer. And I want to thank, in particular, my colleagues Tom Buchanan and Paula Bradley for bringing this motion before um, this assembly this evening. Pancreatic cancer is equally devastating for sufferers and their families. However, unlike cancers such as bowel, breast and prostate, five-year survival rates have remained unchanged, as we've heard, for the last 40 years. Contributing to 6% of cancer deaths, pancreatic cancer is currently the fifth biggest cancer killer in the UK and is expected to become the fourth biggest killer by 2030, overtaking breast cancer. The lack of awareness and the difficulty in diagnosis has in no doubt contributed to the poor survival rates, with only 10% of new patients being suitable for curative surgery due to late diagnosis. It is very often the case that the patient has had a period of unexpected weight loss and jaundice prior to diagnosis. Unfortunately, by the time these symptoms appear, the tumour has become too advanced to treat surgically. Due to the early stages of pancreatic cancer being largely asymptomatic, the initial symptoms often being mistaken for other illnesses. Around 40% of patients will visit their GP three or more times before they are referred to a specialist, with a staggering 16% visiting seven prior to diagnosis. It is an unfortunate reality that 48% of diagnosis comes following emergency admissions to hospital, twice the total of the other forms of cancer. Mr Deputy Speaker, I apologise for using a great deal of statistics, but the disparity between the early diagnosis of pancreatic cancer and other forms of cancer is astounding and can only be properly conveyed in this manner. The one-year survival rate for patients diagnosed during emergency hospital admission currently stands at 9%. For those patients diagnosed following GP referral, it is 26%. This statistic alone speaks loud and clear on the need to provide adequate training and support for health professionals in order that we improve patient outcomes and ultimately survival rates. As with most cancers, there is a link to our lifestyle choices which cannot be underestimated, with smoking, obesity and diabetes all being identified as contributory factors in the occurrence of pancreatic cancer. We must also take responsibility for improving our diet and general way of life. 
That said, there is growing evidence to suggest that a genetic link of predisposition to pancreatic cancer may be identifiable. In the same way, the identification of BRCA2 gene has been instrumental in improving early diagnosis and survival rates for breast, ovarian and prostate cancer. In those people with a family history, we must invest resources into further research of the P16 gene, which has been identified as a possible faulty gene linked to pancreatic cancer. In 2013, only 1% of the National Cancer Research Institute budget was invested in pancreatic cancer research. Pancreatic cancer clearly remains neglected, and more must be done to identify those at risk and diagnose early to improve outcomes. It is imperative that our GPs and health professionals are receiving thorough training and support in order to identify possible pancreatic cancer. In 2013, Macmillan Cancer Support launched an electronic cancer decision support tool pilot scheme, which served to assist in the clinical judgment of patients. The tool works through their existing IT system by identifying the patient's symptoms, their demography over the past 12 months, calculates risk and highlights if further investigation is warranted. This tool would be particularly useful in the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer as the likelihood is not always immediately apparent and the symptoms can be non-specific. Further to the success of the nine-month pilot, this scheme was rolled out free of charge to all GPs across the UK. Whilst this tool does not replace the interaction of a GP will have with his or her patient, it can only serve to enhance the community feel of the GP surgery which has to be recommended under Transforming Your Care. It could also lead to earlier diagnosis of difficult to identify cancers such as pancreatic cancer, therefore leading to possible surgical intervention and increased survival rates. Would the member draw remarks to close? I would urge all our GPs to give serious consideration when using this tool in their practices to provide an effective and proven backup to their own clinical experience. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I support the motion. I call Rosaline McCorley. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Because current falcha, Riven and G Sprock Tactic Sean Yu, because current falcha, Foster Riven Chance, Lorch, or Foster. So I welcome this debate today, and it's a very important debate, and I welcome the opportunity to speak on it. Um, I would say it is very timely that we're having this debate during Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. And it's particularly so given the very low level of attention given to this fatal illness, which makes up 6% of all cancer deaths across the North. So Shaw and, and, and Priyo Kesh, Sajis Brock Shaw, the key issue thrown up by this debate is this. It's a failure to diagnose pancreatic cancer early enough, which results in only around 10% of sufferers being able to avail of curative surgery. So, so what exactly is happening here? Well, patients are going to their GPs, they're complaining of symptoms which are vague and which can be caused by many different conditions, and then they're being sent away telling them that they're okay or they've got something else. And the fact is they're suffering from pancreatic cancer and it isn't being picked up until it's at a very late stage. In fact, Patients are sometimes only being referred to hospital after three or four visits to their GP due to misdiagnosis or failure to be diagnosed at all. And what, what this means is that those people who have pancreatic cancer are often at a very advanced stage, about 90% of patients sometimes, and that's what we're told, and they are beyond the possibility of being able to have curative treatment. So the facts are these. Pancreatic cancer is the fifth leading cause of cancer on these islands. It has the worst survival rate of all cancers, and it receives only 1% of research spend. In terms of comparison with other illnesses, survival rates for other, other cancers have increased significantly over the years. And that, it's good to hear that, and it's no doubt due to the increased uh, awareness among health professionals and the public, and also mainly because of investment in research. However, the five-year survival rate for pancreatic cancer hasn't changed from 3% since 1971, whereas the picture has changed you know, quite significantly for other cancers. So since 1971, bile cancer saw an increase from 22% to 54% survival rate. And as I say, that is good news. It's also good news that breast cancer has risen from 56% 
to 84 per cent in terms of survival rates. Likewise, prostate cancer, 31 per cent to 81 per cent. So it's shameful that in that same period, pancreatic cancer stays the same. And we can directly relate this increase in survival rates to the amount of funding which has been directed at research. The graph of the National Cancer Research Institute shows a huge disparity in investment, with breast cancer at one end of the scale and receiving £41 million in 2012, while pancreatic cancer at the opposite end receiving a mere £4.5 million. This situation can't be allowed to continue. We can't let people drift into early deaths when there are preventative measures that could be taken to help address these issues. So what needs to happen? We need to ensure that the appropriate investment is put in place to encourage the development of diagnostic tools for earlier diagnosis and to ensure that pancreatic cancer is placed on a similar footing with other disease research. We need to ensure that the correct training and support is in place for health professionals and GPs to increase early diagnosis rates. And we need to, to know that there will be an awareness raising campaign put in place so that sufferers of this deadly disease are, are not destined to be misdiagnosed in the future simply because of ignorance. And just at this point, on a final note, I, I would like to commend those support organisations who do sterling work to raise awareness for this, uh, this disease. And I also would like at this point to commend my colleague Oliver McMullen for his openness and honesty in, in speaking about the effects of having cancer and how it feels and for raising the issue of the family support which is, which is needed. So, Morocco Skur, on a final note, I would like to say that I call on the Minister to work with the relevant bodies to introduce measures to ensure that pancreatic cancer survival rates are improved across the North in the future. I call Michael McGimsey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, uh, much of what uh, needs to be said, of course, has, has been already said. I have to say this has been a very uh, sobering debate, bleak at times when you listen to the information coming forward. Uh, uh, and we must always remember uh, that this is about individuals, about people. And Oliver reminded us of that uh, uh, in his remarks, uh, that uh, the uh, diagnosis of pancreatic cancer uh, almost invariably is a, a terminal one. And when you look, as has been mentioned, the five-year survival rate of 3 per cent, it's an appalling figure. Uh, and, of course, looking at the survival rates of other cancers and how they have improved, uh, our, our number of them have improved, uh, uh, clear that a great deal of work and investment needs to be done. I think there's a couple of, of uh, points that are, are clear. Uh, the uh, survival rate is much improved if it's caught early, clearly early diagnosis. There's a difficulty in diagnosis, but if it's caught by the GP, then the, the survival rates dramatically improve uh, in the short term, whereas if patients wait until they are in the point of pain and go to the A&E, then their chances are, are greatly reduced. So again, the GP, as the gatekeeper to the service, uh, has the vital role to play, and that's about service, uh, that's about uh, uh, investment in that service, and it's also about uh, awareness for, for GPs and specialist training. It's also clear that age is a factor, uh, smoking is a factor, and also family history is a factor. So therefore, public awareness uh, plays a very important role again and that is around uh, the Public Health Agency, which has a very important role to play in this area. And it seems to me that we need to be looking at the Public uh, uh, Health Agency and how they can take forward uh, a, a public awareness campaign. The issue also around research, and uh, one of the key ways of uh, improving survival rates in cancers such as bile cancer and breast cancer is, of course, screening. Screening is not available, as I understand it, for this particular cancer at this particular time. But again, that is an issue and an area for research uh, and vital uh, that we, we look at the opportunities there. Because I, I think that, and, uh, and again, also uh, drugs that are available, and the Minister has confirmed that any drugs that are uh, uh, applicable are already available uh, through our health service here. Uh, but it, it seems to me that uh, those figures are so bleak. 
uh, at the five-year survival and even the one-year survival uh, that we would be seriously uh, derelict in our duty if we're not looking at those issues uh, that we can take forward, looking at what we can do with what's available to us and improving on those, uh, on those areas and also about how we, we work uh, within our health service and the experience of other parts of the Kingdom and the Republic and uh, uh, internationally about how we go forward to look for some form uh, of screening and find a solution that improves the survival rate so that when individuals who get this diagnosis are not looking at what is inevitably a, a terminal diagnosis in the short term and that we look to extend life expectancy always uh, uh, for those individuals. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker. I call George Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as a new member of the Health Committee, I welcome the opportunity to speak and support this very worthwhile motion, as it highlights the need there is for greater public awareness and diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Mr. Dep Deputy Speaker, at this stage of my contribution, could I state that the northwest of the province seems to be hard hit by cancer uh, related illnesses, which possibly needs research investigation. Even though pancreatic uh, cancer is a particularly aggressive cancer, there are ways to fight it that significantly increases your odds of recovering successfully. Doctors, consultants, and other medical staff do their best and must be applauded for the unstinting work they do, but sadly it may not be enough. This shows there is a need to improve diagnosis techniques and awareness among GPs of the possibility of pancreatic cancer as a diagnosis. Pancreatic, pancreatic, sorry, pancreatic cancer does not usually give rise to any symptoms or signs in the early stages. Therefore, the GPs have a huge disadvantage when trying to diagnose this particular cancer. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the symptoms can also be a sign of other common illnesses such as pancreatitis, gastritis, gallstones or hepatitis. All this means that patients may end up seeing their GP several times or being referred for a number and variety of different tests before pancreatic cancer is even considered. Mr. Deputy Speaker, unlike the majority of cancers, relative survival for pancreatic cancer has improved very little since the early 1970s. Sadly, this can generally be attributed to difficulties in diagnosis. In increasing cancer survival rates must be a major priority, and this must start with accurate diagnosis and early treatment to prevent the high death rate. I sincerely hope the, that the Minister will be able to implement improved and robust guidelines and support for our GPs as the motion requests. By doing this, we can reduce misdiagnosis, improve survival rates, and have a positive effect on those who suffer from pancreatic cancer in Northern Ireland. Mr Deputy Speaker, I support the motion. I now call on the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety, Mr Jim Wells, to respond to the debate. Mr. Deputy Speaker, first of all, could I pay tribute to Mrs. Kay Irvine, who, um, by her perseverance, has ensured that this issue was raised in the Assembly. I fitting tribute to her late husband, Noel, that this issue is receiving such serious attention by the Chamber. I welcome the debate today uh, and also to acknowledge Cancer Awareness Month and to highlight issues relating to what is frankly, a dreadful illness. Um, I was shocked when I heard from Mr Buchanan that 24 people pass on every day in the United Kingdom as a result of pancreatic cancer. That's a truly shocking statistic. And each year, around 8,500 people in the United Kingdom are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And in 2012, according to the Northern Ireland Cancer Registry, 244 people were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and fr frankly, even more shocking is that 243 died. Um, and those are very, very worrying statistics. One of those was Adrian Patterson, a, a church elder in my own church and a family friend, uh, who got the terrible news that he had pancreatic cancer and very quickly established that 
his condition was terminal. It is the fifth most common cause of cancer death, causing 5% of all the cancer deaths in the United Kingdom each year. And the shocking statistic, and there's no other word for it, which has been quoted by almost every speaker here this evening, is that in the 1960s, the survival rate was 3% of those with pancreatic cancer were alive in five years. And the survival rate now in Northern Ireland is still 3%. And that's a truly dreadful statistic. I announced in the Assembly uh, on my second day in an office that for the first time ever, Northern Ireland had passed a very important milestone whereby there were more people alive with cancer in Northern Ireland after five years than had passed on. I actually am delighted to say I got that wrong. It's not after five years, it's after 10 years. 51% of cancer sufferers are alive. Mm -hmm. And there have been tremendous uh, uh, successes in identifying cures for cancer in many fields. I quoted the example of leukemia. When I was a child, 82% of leukemia sufferers passed on, died. And now 82% of children with leukemia are alive after 10 years. That, that's a remarkable achievement. But unfortunately, this is one of the cancers where pancreatic, where there's been no uh, improvement of any note in the last four decades. I'm hoping that Cancer Awareness Month, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, will result in more patients seeking a medical advice at the earliest possible stage of the disease. As members will be aware, the Public Health Agency has an awareness campaign for the signs and symptoms of ca cancer. And we believe this is a key factor in detecting cancer early and increasing chances of successful treatment and survival. We're very much where we were uh, with ovarian cancer, where again, exactly the same principles uh, are, are established. And indeed, I was very taken by the comments made by the Honourable Member for South Antrim, Mrs Cameron, who mentioned the fact that survivalship is so much better when the diagnosis is made by a GP rather than a crisis situation where it's made in an emergency admission to hospital. But at that stage, of course, it's often far too late. And the Public Health Agency is working on a new cancer awareness public information campaign, and this work is now well advanced. Now, I take the point made by the Chair that why should we not have a dedicated campaign for pancreatic cancer? I think that the difficulty here is that we have 21 main uh, serious cancers in Northern Ireland, and it would be difficult, I think, to justify having 21 separate campaigns. I know that uh, Una Crudden is very keen that we have a specific bespoke uh, ovarian cancer campaign. Now, my mind isn't closed on this, but I can certainly see technical and, and, and difficulties with doing this, and also doing it in a way that doesn't cause confusion in the public. A stakeholder engagement session was held on the 8th of May of this year, and that was attended by 50 representatives from the community, voluntary and charity sectors who looked at the evidence and the rationale to support the development of the campaign. The PHA was then asked, tasked to complete qualitative research, which aimed to establish the public attitudes, knowledge and awareness of cancer signs and symptoms. The key findings, I'm afraid, are not encouraging. They highlighted that awareness of cancer signs and, and symptoms is relatively low amongst our population in Northern Ireland. Many people put off going to their doctor because they are afraid of what the doctor might find. That seems a particular problem with the males in Northern Ireland, who are four times less likely to go to their GP than the, than, than, than the ladies. And I think that is something we, as a, as a gender, we're going to have to address because, unfortunately, we can often present ourselves when it's far too late. There was a poor awareness of cancer survival rates in general, and most people had little idea of life expectancy after a diagnosis of cancer. These findings have informed a forthcoming cancer awareness public information campaign, the visible signs for which will commence this month. Unfortunately, the diagnosis, and again, most speakers have raised this issue, the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer presents particular difficulties. No reliable screening test has been developed and the symptoms are often absent at the early stage of the disease. When symptoms do present, they are usually non-specific, i.e. common to many illnesses and often at a late stage. Consequently, outcomes are poor for this form of cancer. To ensure that the best services exist to meet the needs and preferences of people, and these are accessible to all regardless of where they live, a, cancer, a service framework for cancer prevention, treatment and care was published in February 2011. This framework sets out 52 standards which are common to all cancers, 
in relation to the prevention, diagnosis, treatment, ongoing care, rehabilitation and palliative end-of-life care for those who have cancer and those who have a bigger risk of developing cancer. A review of this framework is due to take place in 1516 and this will inform the way forward in our fight against cancer. I fully support the efforts of GPs and other health professionals who are making uh, in the challenging situation and to boost their awareness of early diagnosis and also to reduce misdiagnosis and to ensure that pancreatic cancer survival rates are improved across Northern Ireland. GPs receive training in pancreatic cancer diagnosis within the GP curriculum. This includes interpreting common symptoms, understanding the indications for urgent referral for pancreatic cancer and understanding risks associated with various symptoms which may indicate pancreatic cancer. Most diagnosis of pancreatic cancer occurs in cancer units in the cancer centre, uh, in the Belfast City Hospital, and then they're referred to the regional multidisciplinary team as recommended by NICE guidelines. If surgery is deemed appropriate, this is carried out at the Matter, Victoria's, the Matter Hospital in Belfast, but as several members indicated, only 15% of sufferers actually benefit from surgery because often it is simply too late to do anything at that late stage. Uh, system, systemic anti-cancer treatments are provided within the Belfast Cancer Centre and the decision as to whether surgery is appropriate is entirely a clinical one. When surgery is not deemed appropriate and the disease is advanced, the only treatment may be the referral to a specialist palliative care nurse. While acknowledging the particular difficulties associated with identifying the early symptoms of pancreatic cancer, uh, which can be non-specific and common to a range of illnesses, I look to researchers and clinics, clinicians to advise on how best to improve pancreatic cancer referral guidelines in ways which are practical and evidence-based. Belfast is a major research centre for cancer. That's, uh, uh, that's the Belfast City Hospital. And there are close links between the trust that's the Belfast Trust and the universities, including academics and clinicians. The Northern Ireland Cancer Trials Centre and a network, a network enable patients and others from across Northern Ireland to participate in clinical trials of potentially beneficial prevention strategies, diagnostics, treatments and care. Currently, almost one-fifth of the patients newly diagnosed with cancer in Northern Ireland participate in cancer trial, clinical trials. Since 2000, Belfast has had a successful uh, pancreatic cancer clinical trials portfolio. The completed trials have led to major publications, thereby adding to the global knowledge that is available to clinicians who are treating pancreatic cancer. On a wider level, new health and social care research and development strategy, a new health and social care research and development strategy for Northern Ireland, it's nearing its public consultation stage. Could I just at this point just um, clarify something I said to Mr McKinney, the member for South Belfast. At the moment, all NICE approved drugs for pancreatic cancer are available uh, in Northern Ireland. But the particular drug that he mentioned, we had anticipated a NICE decision in October of this year. That hasn't happened. So therefore, we expect the final guidance to be published on the drug in January 2015. I will write to him and provide full information about that because it is a quite a complex situation. But what I can tell you is that the NICE approved drugs which are there already are available and are not one of the 40 where there's been considerable debate uh, and, and come under the IFR. So just to clarify the situation because he raised a very valid point, I will write to him on that important issue. My department funds core staff and facilities of the Northern Ireland Cancer Trials Network the Central Network through the Regional Health and Social Care Research and Development Fund. This support enables trust to benefit from research funds provided, e.g. by the cancer charities or the industry, but does not specify the types of cancer in which research can be conducted. So low pre uh, predominant cancer studies in, in Belfast are breast, prostate and colon. That reflects the expertise and experience of Northern End researchers. Clinical studies may involve many different types of cancer. Again, many members raised the issue of the paltry amount of money in the overall scheme of things that's dedicated to pancreatic cancer, say in comparison to breast cancer. And that's not to decry the wonderful efforts that are being made in that field, but for a, a, a condition which in a, by 20 years time will become a, unfortunately a very high, high up the league table in terms of fatalities. I think it is a very unfortunate we're not giving this the attention it deserves. 
the fundamental discovery uh, and research led by academics is funded from a wide, wide variety of sources to, and is relevant to all cancers and the prevention. In February 2014, the previous Health Minister launched the Northern Ireland fundraising group of the cancer, Pancreatic Cancer Research Fund, the PCRF. To date, Pancreatic Cancer Research Fund has supported 27 projects in the UK with a grants totalling £4 million, all of that raised by fundraising and donations. Its mission is to defeat pancreatic cancer by funding and promoting, promoting innovative, world-class research into the disease, research that would lead to the development of more effective detection, diagnosis and treatment. In a recent report published by the National Cancer Research Institute, which analysed uh, the research funding by UK health departments and charities over a 10-year period, that's 2002 to 2011, this showed that with regards to pancreatic cancer, research funding increased significantly during that period from 1.5 million to 5.1 million. But as many members have said, they don't believe that that's enough. Several new pancreatic cancer trials are being set up currently, including funding research support from Cancer Research UK. These involve potentially beneficial new drugs to be used alone or in co combination with radiotherapy. Uh, Mr. McMullen, uh, it's unfortunate Alan McMullen isn't here. I would pay tribute to his very honest and personal account of his journey with cancer. And he indicated the importance of support for patients and families. And in Northern Ireland, there are several ways in which pancreatic cancer patients and their families can access support, whether they find themselves in the early stages of the disease or at the latter end of their life. This support applies from diagnosis to treatment and aftercare. The Northern Ireland Cancer Network provides a booklet of cancer services for patient carers, families and friends, detailing local charities with support groups and services. As I mentioned before, the PHA is developing a cancer awareness campaign which aims to alert the population to key signs and symptoms of cancer and also encourage people with symptoms suggested of cancer to, make, to seek medical advice promptly. Further campaigns run by organisations such as Pancreatic Cancer UK are often UK-wide and targeted to specific cancer audi audiences, and the population of Northern Ireland is also able to benefit from these. I welcome the Awareness Month and hope that the resulting publicity will lead to more people seeking advice at the early stage of, of the disease. Whilst acknowledging the particular difficulties associated with identifying the early symptoms of pancreatic cancer, which are non-specific and common to a range of illness, I look to researchers and clinicians to advise on how best to improve pancreatic cancer referral guidelines in, which, in ways which are practical and evidence-based. I fully support the efforts of GPs and other health professionals to boost early diagnosis rates, reduce reduced misdiagnosis, and ensure that pancreatic cancer survival rates are improved across Northern Ireland. Frankly, if we're somewhere in the league table just below Bulgaria, well, certainly there's an awful lot that needs to be done. And illnesses such as pancreatic cancer wreak a devastating toll on patients and their families. But through investing in research and raising public awareness, I hope that progress will be made to improve diagnosis and treatment for this horrendous disease. And I congratulate the member for West Tyrone, Mr Buchanan, in raising this very, very serious and important issue. And I hope that the publicity attached to this debate will encourage people who have the symptoms to go forward to their GPs and that we can encourage greater investment and research into this terrible condition. And I call Paula Bradley to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And can I also thank my colleague, Tom Buchanan, um, for bringing this motion forward today. And can I also thank him for asking me um, to be one of the counter signatories on the motion. And can I just say I welcome the opportunity uh, to speak on this important issue and Mr McMullen, can I, of course, uh, commend him for what he had to say today. He, like some others within this chamber, know what it's like to receive a cancer diagnosis and know what it's like, uh, how that affects not only the patient, but also the families of, of, of people who do receive this or do receive a diagnosis. And we all know that it's a, a very traumatic, traumatic time for the individual and the family. But I have to say, to get a late diagnosis, especially in pancreatic cancer, uh, is, uh, extreme, is extremely bad. And it has been evidence that often patients who received a diagnosis of pancreatic ca cancer are already very far advanced in the disease and often palliative care 
is their only option. This again is devastating for the patient and their families. And the sad fact is that while pancreatic cancer has not had any improvement in long-term health outcomes over five years, and has been said here, it still only receives 1% of research funding. Doctors are also telling us that in regards to any cancer, early detection is key to beating the disease. We have seen how early detection has improved survival rates of cancer such as breast and prostate cancer. Unfortunately, the way that pancreatic symptoms present mean that it is often missed, while other avenues uh, causes for the symptoms are investigated. Doctors are telling us that the location within the body of the pancreas, the general nature of symptoms and lack of diagnostic tools for them to use all play an important part in late diagnosis. We must work hard together to ensure that we reduce these reasons and that the people become more educated about the symptoms of this form of cancer. Mr Deputy Speaker, late diagno diagnosis means that often potential treatment protocols are no longer a viable option for many sufferers. Only 10 per cent of patients receiving curative surgery, and that means 90 per cent of patients do not. So statistics are often very easy to be glanced over, so let me be a little bit more explicit. If all 108 members of this assembly were diagnosed with pancreatic, ca pancreatic cancer today, only 10 would be diagnosed in time for curative surgery to be an option. So I think that brings the hard reality and the stark facts of this deadly disease and how that it is affecting so many people within Northern Ireland and within the United Kingdom. Uh, Mr Deputy Chair, I don't intend going over all that everyone has said, but I do want to just make a few points. And the, the, some of the statistics that have been uh, voiced here today are very stark. And uh, as Mr McGimsey said, it's very sobering this debate when we look at it and we look at how many people are dying in our province with this deadly disease. And the interesting fact that the first person brought up was the chair, was the 48 per cent of diagnoses were made through emergency admissions. Now surely that is not high. We should be diagnosing anyone with cancer. But what was even more stark was what Mrs Cameron had said, that only 9 per cent uh, were, would have a survival rate uh, from that. You know, so there needs to be much more public awareness, there needs to be much more awareness with it within our GPs, and there needs to be those toolkits in place um, to assist our GPs in making diagnosis. And I remember, Mr Deputy Chair, the many debates that we have had in this chamber. We have had debates in this chamber on cervical cancer and the H H HPV vaccine, and how we have seen a, a real increase in that and a real uptake in that in our young women. Uh, at school age, albeit I would like to see young men get that also. We have had debates here on ovarian cancer, and the minister brought up uh, Una, and how, what a difference she has made, and what a difference those debates made in, in people's lives that were suffering from the various cancers. We have also seen great work within the Public Health Agency when it comes to breast cancer and prostate cancer and how that has made such a difference in people's lives. So I think it goes to prove that whenever we work together in this assembly, we can work together for the better to make differences in people's lives. And Mrs Dobson brought up the point earlier that it's all well and good us being here and debating an issue, but there has to be follow through on it. So that is something we all, I think we all believe that is something worthwhile fighting for this. So therefore we, we want to see follow through on that. And I know um, as members of the health committee, which most of us are, we will be intent in saying that. I, I spoke to Mr Buchanan during the debate and asked him earlier just exactly how many people in Northern Ireland die of this dreadful disease. And he had said, I think in 2012 there was 244, and the following year 243. And it just led me to thinking of, you know, we've passed Halloween now, and we're heading towards Christmas, and we're doing the countdown, at least I am, doing the countdown to that. And I thought about all of those empty chairs around the tables at Christmas, if we're looking at in and around 240 people dying every year in our wee country and all of those families this year that will be grieving for their loved ones. And uh, Mrs Cochrane had brought it up earlier also when we talk about 
uh, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, we're not just talking about diagnostics and treatment, but we're also thinking about all of those people who have lost their lives because of this disease. So I, I want to just make it clear that I believe that we can reduce the number that uh, through good work and through work uh, through the, the, the department with our GPs and with the public. And I would like to say that let's make this uh, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month worthwhile and let's get a grip on this cancer here in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Thank you. Members, the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Item 6 in the order paper, the adjournment. The question is that this Assembly do now adjourn. This Assembly is adjourned.